a farm that Emerson and Tony are working with in Colombia, what they are dealing with right now just to get their product out. Yeah. What are they dealing with? So much. I was talking to him yesterday. We were having a, a, a long conversation and it was just, it was one of those conversations that leaves you in awe of just how good we have it over here and then how we don't think about anything at all. Everything is just so well placed and we're just you know, our noses are up in the air when it comes to all of these things. But he's like, I can't get any trains into Bogota. I can't leave like at a certain time. There's so much uprising in Colombia. There's no medical facilities. We had to like when COVID started, we had to remain like as far away from the city centers and there was no medics. There was no pharmacies. There, there was nothing. It was just us. And if we one of us got sick, like picture how that must have been for us where if we got sick and someone did, they had to rush him four hours down a very bad road to get them to the nearest kind of clinic, not even like an actual hospital. And so all of the things that they had to go, and then they're like, we went from like having great orders all around the world to only having one order every month. And our economic supply just dwindled and it just dried up. So like all of the things that we're trying to do, the the good things, the growings and being organics and all those things kind of like, you know, it puts into perspective just how much we have built up and then for it to just go away in all in the matter of like less than a year. You know? So in that setting, it was more of a COVID thing, not a government thing. COVID and government both. though. Both. both. Because it's, I mean, for that country in that region specifically, like they're already dealing with less rainfall in the year, which is already shrinking their crops astronomically. But it's at the point now in the past year to where their livelihood depends on getting those crops out but then they have to literally risk their life just to not get the crops out, but try to get those crops out. You know, you risk your life getting to Bogota to try and get it to a place to where it can go out. So you're literally risking your life for the sake of your livelihood for your family. I mean, that's another angle is the climate impact on the availability of coffee and what I would assume will eventually trickle down into the price of coffee. As it's harder to source it, your average consumer is going to end up paying for that. Well, and that's the, that's the other disconnect. Like we, Johnny Go Lucky will just kind of like complain and go like, oh, why is this pour over $8? And it's like Johnny Go Lucky is going home to his computer and his phone and all that stuff. Meanwhile, that $8 is going to support somebody who doesn't have access to all the stuff that we have access to. And that's barely helping them to stay on. Well, I know for Farm Cup, it's a big deal to deal directly with the farmers so that they get their fair share, correct? What is it like for those farmers who aren't fortunate enough to have direct trade with their their buyers? Let's do some math. Yeah. It's beautiful. Okay. So if you were to go to like one of the bigger traders or brokers in America, they will sell you anything from $1.60 to $5.80 perhaps per kilo of coffee. A whole kilo is $1.60? Yes. So keep that in mind. Most of them hover around like the two to three dollars, four dollars perhaps, depending on the regions that you're trading with. So the farmer gets $1.60 a kilo? Yes. Okay. Now let's look at our math and I, I have no problems like sharing this. Like our Peruvian farmer gets about 15 to $16 per kilo of coffee wow. uh, per, per kilo. Can we break it down to per bag? So most people will know this as like, if I buy a bag of coffee at a coffee shop, it's mm -hmm. somewhere between 17 to $25. Right. How much of that goes to the farmer? So if we, for example, if you pick up one of our Mexico bags from our Govia, it's $19 for 12 ounces, right? Which is not even a whole pound. And then we retail it for $18 to the farmer. They're getting about maybe like $8 from that, $9 from that. The rest of the, the rest of it is packaging cost, overhead cost, labor cost, shippings, all of that stuff. So it's a good chunk of the actual yeah. part of it. And it just, it creates such a better dynamic for us, honestly, because it, it gives us fresher product. I tell them directly, Hey, there's a problem with the coffee. They fix it by the next batch. We have a product that I love and that I can talk to the families directly. And um, I just feel so much more connected with it. It's not just about the monetary. It's also in the back of my head, I can go to sleep rested knowing that they're not cutting down trees. They're not invading into other people's areas. They are not having child labor. They're not having immigrant labor. They're not having forced labor. All these things that make such a difference, but no one thinks about when they pick up the coffee. So when you go into another coffee shop, they're not thinking about that stuff, but I do. But and most, so most coffee shops have to deal with like a middleman. 
yeah, or a company. And that's where it gets complicated when you get these big brokers or these big roasters. You kind of like lose all protections and everything that you kind of like invested、um, into the coffee game because you're getting a cheaper price. 